Today we ask the age old question. Will it pop tart? Let's talk about that. Good mythical summer. The quintessential snack that has been dominating the breakfast market since before we were even born. That's saying a lot. Is the almighty Pop-Tart. We mm -hmm. tried every flavor on this show. We use them for sandwiches on this show. Mm -hmm. We even built an entire restaurant around them on this show. Yeah, so by now we know what our favorites are, but the real question is whether you prefer them toasted, frozen, or room temperature. Well, I'm not a psycho, so toasted. Okay. But that's not the real, real question. The real, real question is the age-old question. Can we transform Pop-Tarts into something you've never seen before, but then hope to see again in your own mouth because you noted how much we loved it in our own mouths? In other words, it's time for... Will it Pop-Tart? Okay, to qualify as a Pop-Tart, the dish must have a rectangular tart base, some kind of filling, jelly or otherwise, and some sort of icing on top. Okay, for our first one, when you think of the hottest and trendiest breakfast item to come out of the last decade, top of the list just might be avocado toast. Mm. However basic it may have become since then, seasoned green mush on a toast is a combination that does weirdly work. Yeah. Uh, so it should be Pop-Tarted, right? Maybe. Yes, here we have the Popocado tart. Um, <laughs> Toast tart tart tarts tarts. Now uh, I found it interesting that the way you emphasize what you emphasized when you said the the thing that was. Did anybody else catch that? I was literally about to point that out. Yeah. Uh, avocado toast. Avocado toast. Avocado toast. Avocado toast. Avocado toast. Av no, avocado toast. You I say it like a question. <laughs> well, it's is like it, you're, hold, hold you're on, expecting. Is this, no, is this you, avocado toast. No, you're expecting toast but you got avocado on it. It's avocado toast. You're saying it like they said it in the first six months when it was on the scene. I don't but need now it that, that it's much. become a thing, it's just avocado toast. Okay, so are you saying that I'm not basic or that I am basic? Uh, I'm just saying you seem like you're still a little bit unsure about it because you're like, avocado toast? Are Josh, you sure? What do you, just, how do you say it and what did you do? Yeah, so the avocado toast. So we've done like a, <laughs> <laughs> we've done a whole wheat pastry. Uh, there's avocado, lemon, and chili flake inside and on top, simple avocado icing uh, with additional salt, pepper, and chili flake. And you made it even more fun colored than <laughs> yeah. avocados typically would be. Well, you toast avocado, it turns brown. It so turns brown, to, exactly. You know, we had to market it. Do you think this would go brown if we let it sit out? Well, I mean, just look how green that is. There's, there yeah. there's food coloring in that. Yeah, just a touch. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just a little bit. Take it. it. And sink it. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> The savory is throwing me a little bit. Yeah, because your mouth wraps itself around a Pop-Tart and says, okay, sweet's gonna happen. We've said that many times on this show, animals, especially birds, uh, can't eat avocado, it's poison. We found that out when one time we tried to feed a hawk. Yeah, well we found out in the comments, <laughs> the hawk didn't die. Um, I just, I've got a theory here that's forming. A lot of breakfast and brunch has moved outdoors because of obvious reasons. Oh over the last year. Oh. Avocado is a very common thing. Have you seen how many birds have been dying lately? And have you seen how many birds like to swoop in and attack outdoor brunch? I mean, last time I was having outdoor brunch with Jesse, there was a bluebird that kept coming back to this one woman's table. Oh my gosh, you're telling me that- And everybody's brunch... like, why are the birds dying off? Well, I freaking figured it out right here on this show. It's avocado toast? It's the avocado toast. <laughs> no, it's avocado toast which is not good in a pop tart. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, let's just be honest about this one. Avocado, avocado toast. toast? Will it pop tart? tart? No. Everybody knows and loves the flavor of an ice cold Pepsi on a hot summer day. Yeah. Or so we thought. Pepsi's released new fruity flavors like mango and berry and vanilla instead of staying in their freaking lane with the cola that we know best. When will these conglomerates end their reign of tyranny? Oh, whoa. whoa. Uh, this is not a ret rant. Oh, it's not? Uh, so let's take it down a couple of thousand notches. Sorry. We are calling this one the Pep Tart. Oh, creative. Pepsi, Pepsi in a Pop Tart. Uh, and I gotta say, Twinkie Fingers, you've done an immaculate job with this packaging. It really makes it it leap off the store shelves if it wills. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, so let's um, let's find out what you've done, Josh. First of all, it seems that you've taken a napkin that said Pepsi on it and draped it over it, a pot Is that chart. what you did? Ah, uh -huh, you're familiar with our culinary techniques. <laughs> Well, but I am sympathetic to, I guess this is a printed logo somehow mm -hmm. made edible. No, it's hand-painted. Yeah, we've, we've hand-painted each I mean, y you guys had like the graphic Pop-Tarts during the Gut Check episode. It says it's a mermaid on the packaging, and then it's a kind of green fish blob yes. when you open it up. Yeah. That's what we tried to invoke, the realism of Pop-Tart. It, it's like definitely Pepsi colored in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it, a, a it mango looks... Pepsi filling and then a little bit of a wild cherry glaze on oh, there. Oh, mango. Huh? I mean, it looks like good. motor oil in Don't there. Don't get me started. Yeah, a little touch of motor oil just to finish. Mm. Grease the skids. Do you want to dink it? it? And sink it. Pride of the Carolinas, Rhett. Yep, uh-huh. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, everything you were ranting about with the fruity alternative flavors really helps it. You know what might help with this? Um, if every time you bit this, you heard the most satisfying sound in the world. Okay. Twinkie, Let, can, you, can you do that? Oh, I got a thumbs up. Let's try it. Oh. I mean, that does help. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm definitely more satisfied, but I just don't know. You'd have to install like some sort of little speaker on the box. Let's see if we can just think about it. Still play it. Oh. No, oh, that was that was That works. Good. Mm -hmm. And this tastes good, and I really like the colors and the napkin-like logo work on top. So you, you think we? Can I'm, get, I'm for this. You think we could get Kendall Jenner to take one of these and go to like a crowd of people and like hold it up to them or whatever she did in that co <laughs> controversial commercial? <laughs> she doesn't want us talking about that. Okay, sorry, Kendall. We know you're a fan. <laughs> Pepsi, will it pop tart? Yes. yes. Do you know who's made pop tart cheesecake? and flaming Hot Pop-Tarts, yeah. and even Pop-Tart Tacos. I do. The Mythical Kitcheneers yes. who made these Pop-Tarts for us today, they have their own channel, Mythical Kitchen. Go experience it, the food magic yourself. All Mythical right, Kitchen. for this next one, one of the best foods that come from New England besides Ben and & Jerry's and Boston Baked Beans, uh, I, I, mm. I'll throw you a bone there. Thank you. Is the iconic lobster roll. Uh -huh. Ooh, you got the lobster meat. Slather that in butter, lemon, and spices on a grilled bun. All for your ultimate maritime enjoyment. But can that deliciousness carry over into Pop-Tart form? We're calling this one the Popster Tart, but we almost called it Seaman's Delight Tart. <laughs> yeah, because this a seaman is uh, someone up from the sea that might fetch a lobster for us. Visually, we're in a totally different space with this frosted lobster roll. Josh, is there a... It's almost a salmon-esque Yeah, yeah, the happening. color of the top here, you went for a lobster color. We were, we were trying to invoke the color of a lobster, yes, yes, yes. Okay. And, and, then, and then the yellow is trying to invoke the color of butter. That's the butter frosting swirl. All right. There's some, uh, some freeze-dried chives instead of sprinkles on there. And look and then, at that. Inside a nice bright lobster paste with just a touch of Old Bay. I love the way you're sending the colors into very exciting directions. Yeah. Just like Pop-Tart. Uh-huh, yeah, you gotta uh -huh. do that. Because, I mean, the thing we haven't really talked about is the fact that Pop-Tarts are, are mostly for children. And there are some strange adults who continue to eat them well into adulthood. You know, no shame. None at all. But kids typically don't like seafood. You know, it takes a while for kids. It's like the last thing that you start liking when yeah. you're growing up a lot this, of times. This, this will teach them to love a lobster roll. There's not a lot of people that like seafood for breakfast. I mean, what's the earliest that you'll put a fish in your mouth? <laughs> uh, I've never thought of it that way, but I guess I've just instinctively gone with 4 p.m. Really? Yeah, 4 p.m. I've eaten some lunches. But you can get, sometimes there'll be some like smoked salmon in the morning that they'll sneak no. that in. So tw I'll say 12.01. You'll do 12.01. Because I, do do I don't do that stuff. Am I ready for this? Well, let's find out. I mean, it, sm it smells interesting. Huh. Does it take you back to my very memorable 40th birthday party? Oh, I will say one of the one of the best lobster rolls I ever had was at one of the best parties I ever went to. Hey, thanks. This man's 40th. You walk out, you go inside, you got some Yacht Rock, you come outside, and you got a food truck with lobster rolls. They taste, tasted better than this. We gotta do that again, man. I do it all the same. Great party. Um, Ugh. This, this is, is, a, this is, this is take, take, I was, I was delaying my reaction. It's just taking a lot for me. When I saw your reaction to the avocado toast in round one, and you're like, I don't know if savory works, I was like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, mm. it's still sweet. Like, you've got the the frosting is. <sighs> I gotta be honest with you, Josh. I want, I want to like it. 
Mm-hmm. I want you to want to like it. <laughs> uh, but sometimes what you want is not what you get. I actually think the problem is the frosting. You think that's the only problem? Having okay. a little bit of sweet in I'll it. Be, I'll be nice. The only what? problem with this is the frosting. <laughs> Lobster roll. Will it pop tart? No. Okay, with it being summertime, it's easy to fall victim to delicious yet greasy and fatty foods that end up wrecking your stomach. And instead of spending hours nursing yourself back to health, why not just take a bite of a Pepto-Bismol Pop-Tart? Mm-hmm. We're calling this one Pop-To-Bismol. But we almost called it Siemens Delight. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, kept, we kept trying it. I mean, this is the most eye-poppingly, I mean. It's pretty. Purdy pop tart I've ever seen. That's a pretty it, pop tart. It's purdy. It's pettable. Like I found myself it's smooth wanting to pet it. It's smooth. Smooth. So smooth. So smooth. And then on the bottom, it's a little. It's, it's a little, a little rough. rough. But still a little bit. It's smooth. a little rough, but it's smooth. Josh, what did you do? What, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> We're just petting your pop tart. <laughs> That's cool, man. Uh, so we uh, <laughs> we've sort of Pepto bismolified everything uh, in there from from oh, the wow. crust to the filling to the frosting, and then we've also added some other tummy relieving agents in there with a uh, banana, ginger, and guava. There's a lot of room in this. If you see, you saw that. Oh yeah, yeah. You see what happened there? There's a lot of room. I'm hoping high for this one because I would love to be able to go back to our retreat center just off the set and be able to grab these things. Because we have a big right now we just have a bottle of Pepto, <laughs> yeah. and then when that thing gets low, we, we got to have another one right behind it, just like a convenience store. And I'm pretty fond of the taste of Pepto. Yeah, we we yeah we just kind of swig it just out of habit now because we need it so much on the show. So a normal person might not like this, but my initial reaction is, oh yeah, I'm gonna feel better in a few minutes. Yeah, there's a Pavlovian response. Don't to don't worry. That taste, knowing that it's gonna, it, mean, it means stomach soothing is coming. Mm-hmm. Makes you poop black. That's another way. Does it say that on the Something packaging? Something out of mine. Makes your dookie dark. Is what uh, Twinkle Fingies. If you could add that, I think the kids would love it. It's like, ooh, I want to, I want to do that. Um, this might be my favorite one so far. I like it. There's a. Did you expect us to like this? I don't know what to expect anymore. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> There's a utility and a taste. I actually I kind of like eye, the taste, and it's the, very fun. The look of it, Can and it's so that? pettable. Okay. Pepto Bismol. Will it pop tart? Yes. yes. You heard about what the cicadas are doing this summer? Yeah. Billions of them are emerging from the ground for the first time in 17 years. It's called Brood 10, and they've been plaguing the Midwest and the Mid Atlantic with their. Uh, cicada sounds, that mating hum, and then leaving their exoskeletons all over the place. Now, uh, back in North Carolina, you would see the uh, cicada exoskeletons on, on a pine tree, but not out here in California, so uh, we wanted to bring it to us in Pop-Tart form. This is the Cicada Crunch Pop-Tart. Mm, exo excuse mm. me <laughs> so we got some exoskeletons on top of here, right, Josh? Yes, that's correct. Or, for, or for crunch. That's, they're not full cicadas. Well, I got a full one right there. I think yeah. that's an actual dead cicada. Yeah, they are escape. full cicadas. Typically, you would remove the legs and wings because they are, of course, edible to cook them, but we like to use the whole animal here in the mythical kitchen. And so uh, we have left them all intact for extra crunch. And then, of course, ground cicadas oh, in the filling gosh. and in the pastry, there is no running from it. Oh, gosh. There's a lot of cicada inside this Pop-Tart. I mean, as a kid, I would pluck those exoskeletons off the pine trees and get pretty freaked out. Did you? I didn't understand what was happening. I didn't, I didn't know I that like, there was this whole 17-year thing. I mean, I mean, I would just see that exoskeleton on a pine tree, and I would be like, is that like a ghost <laughs> a bug? I didn't, know, like, you know, I didn't really go. You had to go to the library to yeah, know anything. Crazy, crazy. They didn't talk about it on the local news. Question is, would you stay underground for 17 years just to come out to mate and then die? Depends on how good the mating is. <laughs> well, I, I mean, given our conservative backgrounds, I think that's kind of what we did. <laughs> yeah, good thing, but we didn't, I mean, die, I was, we didn't die directly I after. was. I almost did. <laughs> well, I was, uh, but, uh, let's see. I thought I might for I, a second. I lost my virginity. Oh, okay. uh, And then well, the year I, of the cicada. And then I turned um, 21 three days later. Oh, yeah. Oh, had your first beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, priorities. The thing I'm wondering about is all these little cicadas here, these ones in particular. I don't think you can lose virginity. It just. 
let's save that for another time. Well, you right? can't find it, that's for sure. <laughs> right. Where is it? Let's just eat these. What is it? I, why does it taste like this? Like soap? Soap and soil and insect excrement. I, I think it's the cicadas. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've actually had a lot worse things. I mean, the, the, the insect taste is something that we understand. On the spectrum of insect tastes, like scorpion being super, super bitter and really, really bad, and like crickets being pretty crunchy yeah. and just savory, this is on the cricket side for me. Not for you? <laughs> you seem to be taking it very well. Oh, okay. So, do you think that there is a clear answer here? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's definitely worse insects, but none of them are around here. I, I, I haven't had them. I mean, I don't want to do it again. I'll wait 17 years and do it again. So, cicadas, will it pop tart? No! Of course not! Ooh, but it, but it sure was fun. Uh, thank you, Josh. You know? You know what? It's not just to make babies. Yeah. It's also for the fun of it. You get an A for effort and a V for virginity. I, I thought I lost my virginity, but it was just in the couch cushions. Oh. That's it. That's a visual I didn't. Man. Maybe William. I'm not picturing what I found you it. I thought hey, I lost hey, it, but you... I reached in the couch cushions. I was like, oh, there it is. It's all don't on the couch no, cushions. No, no, no. You should tweet that even if you don't understand why it's funny. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks for subscribing and clicking that bell. You know what time it is. We're the Berkeys in Bloomington, Indiana. This is cicada tacos. And this is cicada chocolate ice cream. And it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. I think they look so happy because they haven't eaten it yet. Yeah. You know, they're just showing <laughs> that's, that's it. That's gotta be it. <laughs> Click the top link to watch us officially settle the pop versus soda debate in Good Mythical More. And to find out where the wheel of mythicality is gonna land. I thought I just wasn't putting enough love into my cookies and that's why they were flat. So I started screaming at them saying, this is tough love! And then they didn't get any, any, any more rise.